Welcome back. Today I want to talk about varmint rifles. I've had a number of questions over time about uh, varmint rifles or varmint pistols. What's a good cartridge? You know, what, what range are they good for and things like that. And uh, so I'm going to talk about generally uh, varmint rifles and cartridges and um, what, what constitutes a good uh, varmint cartridge for you. Most important of all is accuracy. When you talk about varmint grade accuracy, you're talking about, uh, generally speaking, sub minute of angle, or as close to it as you can get. Um, because you're talking physically about a small critter, a small, uh, small animals, and uh, you're usually at extended ranges, at extended distances that uh, a, a, a rifle that's uh, not capable of fine accuracy is gonna be frustrating. So um, you need to have good accuracy. Power commensurate with its range, I think, is always a good uh, sober selection. Um, I'll start out with, here's a varmint rifle, and it doesn't have a uh, metallic cartridge. This is a uh, spring air uh, pellet rifle. It's my 177 caliber Beeman R7. This is probably the most uh, successful uh, varmint rifle that I've ever possessed. Uh, this, this ranks up there with the other uh, spring air rifles that I've had through the years that uh, are, in the same, are in the same category of uh, you know, success stories when it comes to uh, taking, taking varmints out. I'm talking about just marauding critters around the house. Um, we have here uh, a real a real, real problem with uh, red squirrels and uh, chipmunks. You know, chipmunks are cute little critters and everything, and it's, it's nice to have them, to see them in your backyard and your garden and stuff. But when you have a colony of them uh, living, you know, around your house, uh, that's not good. Uh, Benny tore his ACL a couple of years ago uh, when his uh, foot went through uh, a hole in the front yard by the shrubs. and. Uh, you know, he could have he could have uh, seriously done some bad work on his knee. For, fortunately, I don't know how, but the ACL has healed up, and he's uh, he's he's able to jump back up on our bed again. So I, that's uh, that's a great thing. But um, chipmunks can be a real issue for us, uh, and for that reason, uh, this this rifle here uh, took out over forty chipmunks last year, and. Uh, over 20 uh, red squirrels and red squirrels they can get up into the trees they jump over onto your roof and they if they get into your house you really got some problems they can get into your wiring they'll nest in your insulation uh, they do any number of problems so um, so those can be varmints um, we call them more like pests but uh, they're they're that's that's the sort of that's the sort of medicine that uh, this calls for why is this a good rifle for that sort of thing? Well, very simply, uh, because living, you know, living in a uh, uh, habited neighborhood, inhabited neighborhood where you have people around, uh, you can't be letting loose with a firearm. Uh, the, the crack, the report of a firearm, and not only that, but it's, uh, it's unlawful. Uh, in the state of New Hampshire, you can't discharge a firearm within 300 feet, or well, that is 100 yards, uh, of an occupied dwelling uh, without, the, without that person's permission. So, uh, that that just excludes the use of any firearm, and I wouldn't want to use a firearm in, in close proximity to other houses anyway, simply because the impact velocity is just too is just too dangerous, um, and uh, you know the the, the possibility of uh, bullets escaping your surrounds uh, through a ricochet or something like that is is always present. But uh, you know a spring air rifle is a great little varmint rifle for pests like that. This is not a high velocity uh, spring air rifle. The R7, the Beeman R7 made by Weirach is a uh, very, very competent uh, low velocity uh, spring air rifle, but because it's low velocity has a very, very uh, light spring impact. The, the, surge, the surge of that big spring uh, is what causes inaccuracy with a, uh, or I should say accuracy difficulties with a spring air rifle. And the R7 has a very, very uh, low surge, so uh, it's, uh, it's easy to shoot, uh, low, low recoil, and it's very, very accurate. Um, this, will put, this will put pellets uh, exactly into the, 
you know, into a half inch, all the way out to uh, 25 yards. Um, this is this is not a rifle which I would shoot uh, at a at a squirrel or a woodchuck. Uh, I should say a chipmunk uh, beyond about 35 or 40 feet. Uh, beyond that distance, uh, the impact velocity uh, doesn't have doesn't have enough carrying energy to bring the pellet uh, into the target. So. Uh, I keep I keep my uh, I keep my distances where they're appropriate, you know, 25 to 35 feet or so, um, and I keep it to headshots. Uh, but with a uh, 8.9 grain bullet a pellet, rather, uh, it'll do the job. Uh, body hits are just not sufficient with this sort of uh, with this sort of energy, so to get the pellet in deep. But uh, with headshots, it's uh, it's extremely fine accuracy. So that's so that's a great option for. Uh, pest control. So that's one kind of varmint. Now, if, where where it's appropriate and where you can you know shoot uh, safely with um, with firearms, and you still have you you still have a desire to keep things somewhat quiet, uh, you can get into this category of uh, uh, cartridge that um, CCI has uh, specialized in over the years uh, is the uh, CB short and uh, the CB short and the CB long, and these are these are cartridges which they have 29. They both have 29 grain uh, bullets. Um, 29 grain bullets, the same weight bullet has been used classically through the years for the 22 short and the 22 long. Not the long rifle, but the the long. The long uses a uh, case which is the same length as a long rifle, but because it has a 29 grain bullet. It's uh, categorized as the long, but the CB long and uh, the CB short have got a very, very low charge of powder. In fact, the, the, the story goes that the, the powder charge is not even there. It's, it's just the priming compound. But whatever it is, uh, drives the uh, drives the, the bullet at uh, regardless of which case they load it in. It drives them at a speed of 710 feet per second from the muzzle, and that's that's pretty potent. Um, you know. If, if you compare that, that pellet rifle there, which is about, with the pellet I spoke of, a, a, an 8.9 grain uh, wasp wasted pellet um, that, that fades in velocity very quickly because it has poor ballistic coefficient, uh, that, pellet, that pellet is starting out at 630 feet per second. These are starting out at 710, but with the uh, higher, much better ballistic coefficient and, and bullet mass uh, of 29 grains, they the velocity is sustained uh, farther downrange, and uh, their their hitting their hitting power is uh, extended way downrange. Uh, you know, with a with a good with a good shot on uh, on squirrels, uh, these these are these are capable out to uh, thirty yards without any trouble. Um, and uh, you know that's that's a and and with with good striking energy. Um, so that's that's an option for somebody who is looking for quietness. When when I say quiet now, those those have those have virtually no report. Uh, it's just at very very quiet. Uh, they say they sound they sound just a little bit just a little bit louder than my than my uh, spring air rifle. And then of course you can go up to the uh, standard uh, rimfire uh, cartridges. You know the the twenty two short. Um, 22 short used to be a favorite around uh, New England dumps. You know when dump when open dumps were popular. You know people <laughs> people used to bring their kids to the dumps to shoot rats, and uh, the 22 short was always the favored one because the 22 short was not something that was going to drive the dump manager ballistic, and uh, you know it, it kept it, it it kept his cool and they didn't mind it. They were fairly quiet report, so you weren't uh, upsetting everybody. Uh, but the 22 short had a range, uh, you know, the, the the standard 22 short had a range that was out to you know 25 or 30 yards. Uh, the high velocity, the high velocity version, uh, gets gets out a little bit faster. These are 1,095 feet per second. You might say, well, that's pretty good. But the only trouble is with uh, as I as I described in in a couple of earlier videos, that 1,095 feet per second is above the speed of sound, but not by much. And due to that, due to that close threshold of the uh, sound barrier being only about 90 or f 95 feet per second slow, uh, less than that, 
Uh, by the time this bullet is only about 25 or 30 yards downrange, it's getting whacked by the by the uh, sound wave. So uh, these are great. These are great in close. Uh, this is a this is a quiet option for shooting up to 25 yards or so. Uh, but once that once that sound wave uh, blast past that bullet, uh, it disrupts its uh, accuracy tremendously. So I'm going to sometime do a little bit of chronographing and find out just where these do descend below the um, uh, sound barrier on the on the high speed uh, shorts because that that'd be good to know. But anyway, it was always a good it was a, always a good uh, favorite in the uh, in that sort of setting years ago. Uh, the standard 22 short is probably a better option for for shooting rats. The standard 22 short it has a uh, velocity that I believe is about uh, 900. I'm not sure, 800 and something or 900. Let me see if it says on here. 830 feet per second. But 830 feet per second means that it's not breaking through the sound barrier initially, and so these retain accuracy way out there. This, these are these are target 22 shorts, and these retain their uh, velocity way out there. These would be actually a better uh, rat killer or anything of of that sort, even even on squirrels, uh, out to. Uh, I mean, really, out to uh, 20, 35, 40 yards uh, without any difficulty. Um, and uh, but you you got to be you got to be sure that you, it's a headshot because they simply only have a, a 29 grain bullet, so they don't have much impact. Um, and then, of course, you can go up to your 22 long rifles, and the same conditions apply. You know, as you as you move up into the high speed hollow points. Then you're dealing with that that uh, velocity threshold with the uh, sound barrier, and but it's it's a it's a broader threshold because that bullet is starting out at usually around 1240, 1260, 1285, or something like that with a with a 40 grain bullet or a 36 grain bullet, something of that order. So you can get out to you can get out to 50 yards uh, with supersonic velocities and good accuracy. Um, and for for longer for longer range shooting with a 22, uh, again, it's it, it's it's called for to use the uh, standard velocity, which doesn't have that issue. Um, and although they start out at a slower velocity by 150 feet per second, uh, that that advantage of being able to get farther down range without having the bullet upset by the uh, uh, sound the sound wake, um, that can be a great advantage. Keeping in mind again that the uh, the bullet construction was not designed for uh, killing game animals. Uh, it's certainly not most of your most of your varmints that are you know bulky like um, woodchucks. A, a woodchuck is 15, 18 pounds or so. That's that's an animal. That, there's a lot of there's a lot of blubber there, and uh, anything but a anything but a solid uh, hit in the noggin, uh, you know, he's going to scurry back to his hole. So. You've got to keep always keep a 22 long rifle uh, in in the accuracy department. You know, hitting them squarely in the head if you're going to use it for uh, anything the size of a uh, woodchuck. Okay, so we're getting out of the um, the the uh, mediocre stuff, and we're moving up to the 22 WMR Winchester Magnum Rimfire or the uh, HMR, the 17 HMR, which is a 17 caliber bullet. Um, those have got extended range capabilities that can bring them way out to uh, you know 100, 150 yards without any difficulty, and with still adequate striking power to uh, be uh, viable on uh, on woodchucks and uh, animals of that sort. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't classify them as being sufficient for anything larger than woodchucks, and uh, I recently had a. Um, person responded to me and said that uh, you know he had done a lot of shooting through the years with uh, 22 uh, WMR on woodchucks and he he kind of he kind of classifies it as being uh, you know 100 125 yards as being its uh, reasonable limit with a uh, body hit because of their uh, basically a, a woodchuck uh, they're they're pretty they're, they're pretty stout tough critters and they'll they'll manage to get back to their hole uh, being well struck in the body so uh, without a without a uh, you know without a bullet that really comes apart and um, hits with high velocity, they can make it back to the hole very very easily. So that's that the uh, 
rimfire category. There's, there's some others out there, but I would say that they're fading in popularity before they even got off, uh, got off the deck. So um, the next thing we, we step up to is the centerfire cartridges. Foremost on the list is one of the oldest of all. Uh, came out in uh, the early 20s. Um, it was a development of Springfield Armory by Captain Grossvenor Watkins and uh, overseen by uh, Colonel Townsend Whalen. And um, it's the it's the 22 Hornet. The 22 Hornet was a, a very very popular cartridge up until the time that uh, cartridges like the 222 uh, came out. Uh, that that really unseated its popularity, but it's come back now. Uh, you know, due to due to uh, the persistence of certain companies that uh, kept it on the charts, Ruger, Thompson Center, uh, and other companies like that, uh, it has it has come back and has reblossomed. People are finding out that it's a it, it's it's a fun cartridge. It's it's a it, it's a low report um, with a uh, 40 grain bullet is about 2,900 feet per second, which is uh, pretty speedy for uh, for any for hitting any uh, woodchuck. That'll take a woodchuck out uh, with a body hit, uh, a solid body hit without any trouble. Um, they have become great favorites in uh, congested areas, places where you know where population has encroached, and. Uh, farm fields are no longer where they used to be. Um, in New England, for instance, in the 50s and 60s, uh, you could find farm fields pretty much uh, in, in every town, and uh, you know dairy farms, and lawn shooting. You could you could get easily. You could find 350, sometimes even 400 yard shots cross corner. Uh, but those dairy farms all closed up uh, in the uh, late 60s and 70s, and um, they basically became uh, woodlands. So. Uh, a lot of the a, a lot of the remaining pastures are just basically uh, somebody's backyard, and you can get some permission to uh, go go shoot there. Uh, and a 150 yard cartridge like the uh, 22 Hornet is ideal for that because you know you're not going to unnerve somebody who's sitting inside watching their TV, watching a movie or something, and you you let loose with some big howitzer. So a 22 Hornet is very nice for that. Uh, they're they're supremely accurate, you know. Colonel Townsend Whelan said that his his motto was that uh, only accurate rifles are interesting. So take it from him; it, it, he wouldn't be interested in the 22 Hornet if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't uh, accurate. So, and it was also produced during World War II as a as a survival cartridge, especially for the uh, U.S. Army Air Corps. Um, so it it had uh, it had good history and it was very popular through the 20s and 30s and 40s and even into the 50s. But uh, it 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 faded. But it's back. So think about that. That's a that's a great that's a great uh, close range uh, center fire environment cartridge that's uh, quiet and uh, highly efficient. And um, and it's available. Uh, there's there's still rifles being made for it, and there's still there's still cartridges being chambered. And actually, sometimes you can find Hornet ammunition where you can't find the other stuff because it's, it stays on the shelves a little longer. Then you move up to the medium range uh, cartridges. You know, the cartridges that are you know I would I say is classically around 225 to to 300 yards. Um, and that's uh, that's the family of uh, the the 222 uh, cartridge family. The 222 Remington that came out in uh, 1950 uh, with its 50 grain bullet traveling at 3,200 feet per second and uh, with its incredible accuracy that had bench rest winning uh, accuracy. Um, that that was a dominant cartridge for for uh, several decades until the uh, 223 uh, uprooted it. But um, it's a, it's still that that whole family of cartridges is still very much uh, a, the most popular out there, uh, led by the 223. Naturally, the 223 is about a 285 yard point blank cartridge on an animal the size of a woodchuck, uh, and uh, it has it has various bullet weights available. Most most commonly, it's a, it's the, the 55 grain. Um, 
When you're talking about a varmint cartridge, I would absolutely never consider using a 5.56 for a varmint cartridge because of uh, the simple fact that they're loaded with full metal, very hard full metal jacket bullets, which have no expansion whatsoever, uh, and uh, the fact that they, the fact that they uh, bounce like basically like ball bearings off of a flat surface. Uh, you know, you'll send one buzzing off into somebody's horizon, and you don't want to do that. Uh, they, they, they're, they're highly prone to ricocheting in an environment uh, setting where you're shooting across a farm field or something. So don't even consider, if you, if you do hit a woodchuck with one of those things, uh, you know, it, it's, by the time it gets at that range, uh, the, the, the velocity has dropped down into the mid, mid-20s or so, and it's just not going to have the impact velocity to... Uh, uh, to, to, to have a satisfying quick kill. So forget the 5.56. Uh, it, it's only, you're talking 150 feet per second or so faster than the 223. Uh, the 223 cartridge is loaded with, uh, typically loaded with uh, rapid expanding varmint bullets that will uh, take out a, a woodchuck very, very quickly with any solid body hit. So uh, that's, that's the name of the game for that. And it's, and then there's the whole, there's a whole panoply of, of different cartridges that are associated with the uh, 222 case. Uh, besides the 223, you still have people out there that got the 222 Remington Magnum, which, uh, you know, that was another one that uh, fell at the wayside. Uh, and the 221 Fireball now has become very, very popular. The 221 Fireball was developed for the XP100 pistol in the 60s, which was a nylon, a nylon pistol. Uh, I believe it had a, tw a 10 inch barrel and um, but that that uh, that pistol was uh, noted for its uh, sub minute of angle accuracy potential it was built on a, a model 600 uh, rifle action modified 600 rifle action which later on was modified again and became the, the Remington model 7 but uh, very very uh, accurate cartridge not only in a pistol for which it was designed for around that shorter barrel length, uh, but people are finding out that it's also become an extremely good uh, mid-range uh, varmint cartridge out of a rifle, extremely accurate out of a rifle too. So uh, that's, that's always a consideration. It's not something you're going to find on the shelves generally. It's a wildcatter's uh, specialty. Um, and then, uh, of course, the, the other one that's in the same category, although it's not 22, is the 204 Ruger. And that was based on the 22 Magnum, uh, the 222 Magnum uh, case. That was a, uh, that, that, was, <laughs> that was very good news uh, to any person who owned a uh, 222 Remington Magnum and for years had not been able to find any uh, cartridge brass for it because uh, you know, basically, it become a it become a real problem. Uh, peop the cartridge had be become obsolete, and uh, people couldn't find brass, and uh, they were scrounging it and paying through the nose for it. Well, the 204 Ruger solved that because it uses that that case dimension uh, simply neck down. So anybody just needs to run a uh, run the 204 Ruger case into a 222 Remington Magnum. Uh, expanding die and uh, a regular, I should say, a regular resizing die, and the uh, and the uh, stem will open up that that case mouth. So there's that, and um, but the 204 Ruger is a terrific uh, cartridge for uh, extended range varminting. Um, it has it has velocities that are up in the same realm as the. Uh, Two, the 22250 and the 220 Swift using a lighter bullet, using 40 and 40 grain, 40 and 45 grain bullets with good ballistic coefficient. Um, I believe the ballistic coefficients up in the like 245 and 270 or so, which is very good ballistic coefficients that are that are similar to uh, 22 caliber bullets that are in the heavier uh, range in the in the like 60 60 uh, grain weight. Um, and they, they, they get out there. They, they're very, very speedy cartridges that run around uh, between 37 and 3,900 feet per second um, and with good accuracy. One has to keep in mind that bullet mass is not there. Sometimes that's an overlooked issue. Uh, mass is part of the bullet's uh, construction. You know, a, a bullet that, 
a bullet that strikes with uh, you know 50, 55 and 60 grains uh, is a lot more mass than a bullet that only has 40 to 45. So e even though they have similar sectional densities and uh, ballistic coefficients, uh, remember always that uh, you, you can't you can't be ramping up you can't be ramping up your uh, quarry uh, too much with a with a bullet that a pill is that small. So they're still very good for uh, there's no there's no woodchuck that's going to survive a hit on a with a 204 Ruger uh, at any range. Um, I would say that with coyotes, uh, at any, you really have to keep you really have to keep logical and remember that your bullet mass is just not there. Um, it relies on it relies on explosive contact. Um, once that explosiveness uh, is is diminished at extended range, now you only have a tiny pill hitting them, and it's you're you're only talking uh, you know two hundred four diameter bullet. So um, you know you, you got to keep you got to get your terminal velocities and keep them where they belong. Uh, keep keep things up in the keep things up in the three thousands where you have that explosive uh, contact. So that's the um, that's the mid range and. Uh, I, with the 204, I'm talking about extended range cartridges. Um, king of the extended range cartridges is the one that I was demonstrating the other day. Is the 22250, and uh, the 22250 is a is a stellar uh, round for those who uh, need to have uh, get some get some long distance shooting in. Um, it's capable of it's capable of hitting as far as you can hit and. Uh, as far as you can hit, it's gonna it's gonna take out a woodchuck. It's got it's got plenty of bullet mass with 55 grain bullets. That's the classic weight for it. Um, 500 yards on a woodchuck or a prairie dog, no issue whatsoever. Uh, it's it's a fantastic cartridge for extended range shooting. Uh, it's also it's also notorious for its uh, its its performance on uh, coyotes. It's got plenty of bullet. It's got plenty of bullet mass for. Uh, Strong hits on coyotes way out, um, and um, it has uh, it has devastating effect on uh, varmints. So, uh, and of course, the 220 Swift. For those of you who are you know nostalgic, and you come across a 220 Swift, ammunition is still available. It's being produced now by uh, various manufacturers. It, it it became pretty much obsoleted for uh, for for several decades, but. It's back on the scene. It's, it seems to have come back like the, uh, almost like the 22 Hornet. There, there aren't too many manufacturers of rifles for it right now currently, but um, if you find an old Ruger number no. one or something like that, uh, or a, a Winchester Model 70, and uh, you know you, you want to have a fine cartridge for you know reaching way out there, that's a good one. It's not as versatile in terms of uh, uh, you know reloading it as the uh, 22 250. The 22250 has got that versatility of being able to uh, handle lighter charges with uh, different bullet weights for uh, closer range shooting. So you can you can span different needs with a 22250. It's it's an all-in-one sort of a cartridge. The 220 Swift kind of likes to have full, really likes to have full steam ahead, uh, you know, loading. So uh, these days they back it off a little bit. By, by about a hundred, you know, logical shooters back it off by about a hundred feet per second or so, and it extends their barrel life significantly. So I think that's about it. Most important of all is to keep it accurate. Um, a good scope uh, for varmint shooting. I would say that uh, you know I, I did I did so much varmint shooting uh, out to 300, 325 yards with a with a seven and a half power fixed loopholed M8 scope back in the 60s and uh, through the through the much of the 70s uh, I never had it had a tapered it had a tapered cross here I never had trouble uh, seeing a woodchuck at 350 yards uh, with with that scope what's I mean seven and a half power is a lot more power than most people give it credit for and uh, it didn't need to have because because it's below nine power it didn't need to have um, uh, Adjustable objective. In other words, the, the the cross is when you when you get a when you get into extreme power, then you you you're parallax sensitive. Uh, when you get up over you know ten power ten power and beyond, you start to get parallax sensitivity. Uh, but below that, uh, the the cross don't move. You know the apparent movement of the reticle is not 
uh, significant out to uh, 300 yards or so on a, on a critter the size of a uh, woodchuck. So uh, I would say that, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you like to have that uh, keeps it light, you can, uh, you know, there's some, there's some extremely good uh, scopes out in there with now, you know, up to 14 power uh, or more. Uh, you certainly don't need to have, you certainly don't need to have 14 power, but uh, if you want to, you know, as I said before, if you want to do a dental check on them before you, before you shoot, that's fine. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you don't, just keep your, keep your wallet close to you and don't spend more than you have to. Uh, and remember that the next, the next important issue is weight. And as I mentioned in a recent video, uh, scope adds weight to the rifle. You know, so you can, you can trim down, you can get a really lightweight rifle and then you put a heavy scope on it and you kind of, you've kind of uh, uh, killed the whole reason why you bought a lightweight rifle to begin with. So uh, keep, your, keep your bases and your, your mounts, your rings, uh, you know, lightweight. You don't have to have, the, these, these rings right here, these, these are, I mean, these are inexpensive rings. These are blocky. I mean, they're, I don't need to have, you don't need to have, you know, heavy, you don't need to have heavy iron to hold the scope down. You know, trim, trim rings. My favorite, my favorite rings for the years has always simply been uh, the loophole STD rings. I mean, they're just, they're terrific. They're, they're basically, uh, uh, they're patterned after the old Redfield STD rings. Um, and those are, those are super. They're, they're, they're trim. They're, uh, even though they're steel, they're fairly lightweight. Uh, you can get them so they're windage adjustable, you can get quick detachable, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, a lightweight rifle is a nice thing to have. I mean, unless you're able to drive up with your truck, you know, in park and, and start shooting right there with a, a heavy varmenter, you know, you're going to probably want to have, you, you'll appreciate having a lightweight uh, varmint rifle that you can uh, just carry around all day. In New England, it means sometimes going up an old dairy pasture that's, you know, a 30 degree incline. And then when you get to the top of that, to get to the other side, you got to climb over a couple of stone walls and maybe some old rusted barbed wire and things. You don't want to have a big heavy rifle that's uh, going to wear you down. So uh, I like to keep it light. And uh, that way there, you know, you, 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 stay, you stay cool throughout the day without uh, overexerting yourself. So accuracy, lightness, uh, you know, cartridge which is uh, suitable for the range that you're going to be shooting without, you know, always consider, always consider the people's sensibilities when you go shooting because it's, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can be very, very, you, you're very privileged when you receive permission from somebody to hunt out in their back when they're back 40 or something. But they can they can change their mind in a heartbeat if they, if they hear some you know terribly raucous noise going off. Um, there's you know you you have the options of shooting varmints with two forty three Winchesters and and uh, any other caliber. Uh, that's fine, but you know sometimes sometimes those cartridges are a little bit too noisy for uh, Mrs. Smith who's uh, you know inside baking or something. She doesn't want to hear that. So. Um, Try to be try to be sensitive to uh, your surroundings when you uh, you know buy a cartridge and, and don't buy more than you absolutely need to have because it, it it's all it's always uh, raw materials you know there's there's more there's more powder there's more brass there's more lead all those things drive the price up directly because of raw materials so thanks for watching and I particularly thank my Patreon patrons who have been so supportive and helped me bring you these videos. So uh, make sure that you uh, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button right now so that uh, I'm on your list and also hit the uh, bell so that uh, I'll uh, be able to notify you when I have a new video up. Thanks for watching and God bless.